When you approach laying out a roadmap and building a blockchain in the way Cardano has, it was always going to be met with fierce criticism and in turn rejected or overlooked by the wider crypto space. Throughout history, all the disruptive technologies that have come before were at first discounted, disregarded, and in many cases disrespected before they dominated their respective industries to a degree unimaginable by the first movers themselves. Cardano is no different in this respect. The peer-reviewed academic approach was slated for years and used as a weapon to mock this so-called science project. But as we look around the blockchain industry in its current state, it's never been more obvious that the level of research undertaken at the start puts you years ahead of the competition later on down the road. While the not invented here syndrome spreads like wildfire throughout the industry, Cardano has remained true to its approach, placing itself at the very frontier of blockchain technology. Now, as IOG keeps turning the peer-reviewed papers on, converting them from extensive research to tangible technology, no longer is this blockchain development slow and steady, but moving at such a pace, it's difficult to see how anything else is going to be able to keep up. Welcome back for today's instalment of Cardano Insights, where we track the all-important developments of the very pulse of Cardano and its ecosystem. So let's get straight into it. So today we're going to dive a little deeper into the Basho era off the back of the detailed presentation uploaded by Charles on Monday, where he provided a great insight to the structure, components and impact of the rollout of this highly disruptive technology. Basho represents a significant stage in the Cardano roadmap, heavily focused on improving the scalability of the network whilst being delivered concurrently with Voltaire, the governance piece, which will form the final two eras of what I believe will prove to be the most robust, effective and well-executed roadmap blockchain-wide. Firstly, he briefly mentioned the work on Voltaire and governance being well underway, which includes the formation of the members-based organisation, a constitution and multiple SIPs that are currently being drafted. Charles confirmed that he'll be doing a big presentation at the summit, with lots to be announced regarding this at the event in November. But in this presentation he delved deep into Basho. As you may be aware, the first signs of scalability focused tech has already been delivered off the back of the Vassal upgrade, with the first version of Diffusion Pipelining now launched, with many versions and optimizations to follow. In addition, the significant improvements to Plutus in the form of V2, we've already seen a 10x reduction in script size and 50% lower fees in many cases across the dApps in our ecosystem, which we've been tracking on this channel. Plutus optimizations will continue with version 3 expected to follow in 2023, where the expressiveness will be taken to another level altogether. So what else is on the horizon? Well, Mithril is now rapidly approaching version 1. Possibly this year, but likely early 2023, SPOs are already testing this extensively and is something Charles described as the biggest pillar of Basho. We've covered Mithril on numerous occasions in some detail, but effectively, Mithril creates an overlay to the layer 1 to construct proof certificates that enables you to verify many transactions off-chain. I think he gave the example of voting, then aggregate all of this together into one single transaction on-chain chain. This provides the same impact and trust assumptions as if you've aggregated all the transactions on-chain. In effect, Mithril enables the bootstrapping of full nodes quickly and provides like clients full node security that in essence enables the many-to-one concept, something vital in achieving scalability, as this requires lots of actions to be completed in one execution, a real powerful piece of technology. Charles confirmed the progress regarding Mithril is moving very quickly with an expected Q4 to Q1 release. We'll be getting fast bootstrapping and light client application. This technology is intended on being used in input endorsers, voting and other applications that need to leverage the many to one concept. Next to Hydra. Similar to Mithril, this is also a fast evolving technology with the V1 release expected in Q4 to Q1. This is where Charles provided some real clarity in terms of Hydra. V1 is not going to be an overlay network that will sit on top of the L1 that, for instance, SPOs will run some form of accelerator network. Now, whilst this can be the case further down the line with the introduction of Hydra Tel, something also being developed for things like microtransactions, the current version will be a dApp embedded software forming part of the off-chain kit, embedded into dApps that require lots of scale like DEXs, lending protocols and so forth. This enables you to batch lots of transactions together, similar to Mithril in this respect, to achieve a many-to-one result, leading to a significant reduction in cost and increase in speed. Mithril is closely connected to the progress of Hydra, they have shared teams, and as Mithril advances, Hydra advances, forming two key components for improving scalability of the Cardano blockchain. 
But the biggest single contributor to increased throughput, however, is input endorsers. Charles explained that he doesn't believe this will be required in 2023, as if you look at the improvements coming to diffusion pipelining in Plutus, along with the introduction of version 1 Mithril and Hydra, we will have more throughput than we have used. But with the effective TPS rate already very high, it's not difficult to envision the impact once Mithril and Hydra are finally introduced. But this doesn't mean input endorsers is just a concept. The design started way back in January of this year. SIPs are actively being written as we speak, and we're at the stage now where the design is all figured out. This is now being translated into SIPs, and see, input endorsers is not a small thing. It basically constitutes as a reimagining of the Cardano blockchain structure. Charles explained that effectively you go from the standard process of a chain of blocks to achieving lots more in parallel, followed by batching all of this together, then repeat. In real time, this results in the blockchain continuously running computations. This has a significantly positive impact. Right now, only 0.25% of the block time budget is allocated for computation. That's the execution of scripts, which is massively limiting. The throughput you get from input endorsers is going to be gargantuan. Not just a 10x, but a significant increase in speed and reduction in cost. This is where Mithril comes into play with input endorsers. As the blockchain moves to continuous execution of scripts and huge increase in throughput, the blockchain is going to grow significantly, meaning you need an accelerated bootstrap mechanism. The Mithril and Hydra program will continue throughout 2023 because these components are vital for building out input endorsers. So Mithril and Hydra comes first, which then contributes to the rollout of input endorsers. Input endorsers are considered to be the final milestone of the Basho era because when we consider what we already have from the Vassal upgrade and incoming version 1 for Mithril and Hydra, this is enough to be highly competitive against all of the top 15 cryptocurrencies for the here and now. Input endorsers, however, will enable Cardano to scale for the next 5 to 10 years. In November, the SIPs will be announced, which will lead to a big community conversation as these SIPs will affect everything from staking, reward structure, fee structure, and a whole lot more. Something on this scale requires the entire community of developers to have input and is another big collaborative piece. Finally for Basho, we turn to sidechains. Charles explained that they will use Ouroboros to bootstrap a sidechain. That sidechain will take on a number of SPOs and that becomes the quorum with the BFT protocol of the sidechain with a bridge to move a value back and forth to the main chain. The idea is to have the main chain with an ecosystem of sidechains. Each sidechain will have its own application domain, which will create and be responsible for a whole lot of transaction volume. With the transaction volume being held by the sidechain, this means all of this is being done in parallel, meaning the processing of the sidechain doesn't consume the resource of the main chain. This was described as a super Hydra, Hydra being dApp specific and sidechains being ecosystem specific. The sidechains will be doing things like different computational models like supply chain, privacy, EVM or NFTs. Users will be able to move value back and forth represented in native assets on the main chain. Interestingly, Charles explained that by holding ADA, as a result of the SPO selected to maintain the sidechains, they will in addition to ADA be paid for the work they're carrying out in the sidechain's protocol's native assets, meaning delegators and SPOs will receive ADA in addition to all the tokens those SPOs have contributed to and made blocks for. So for Basho and scalability, there are many components in a very complicated body of work. For example, you have basic stuff like diffusion pipelining, then we have Mithril and Hydra, which are interconnected, where we go from many to one, then comes input endorsers, which he described as the big daddy, moving to a parallel architecture where you get speed without compromising decentralization, network stalls and security, going from 0.25% script execution time to continuous execution time. Ouroboros was specifically designed to enable this, and Cardano is the only blockchain that has the capabilities to achieve this. Then you have sidechains, effectively moving lots of transactions off-chain in an incentivized system where sidechains are effectively paying rent to the main chain to operate, paying for security, liquidity and infrastructure, in turn rewarding SPOs and delegators with their native assets. Now lots of the scalability efforts and technology being rolled out in Basho will be rolled out in parallel to the governance aspect of the roadmap in Voltaire because lots of the implementation of this tech rollout touches a lot of the infrastructure already in place and requires lots of SIPs to be completed so the community will be heavily involved. Charles explained that the goal is to reach the tricameral governance model in 2023 entirely controlled by the community. This is Cardano's USP, harnessing the power of the community to run things is a huge competitive advantage. Charles described this as if you have 3 million people building, thinking and contributing through a constructive, collaborative process, 
you have an extremely powerful weapon that will be completely unique to Cardano. Charles then reminded us about the tech rollout in Basho is for the most part as a result of the 150 plus research papers written and published. At this stage it's basically rolling out all of the great ideas that will lead to high throughput without compromising decentralization or security. The careful thought that's gone into the Cardano roadmap is staggering and in reality has resulted in Cardano moving way faster than any other ecosystem in respect of the quality of the tech and how well positioned they are to actually solve the blockchain trilemma and effectively scale to billions of users. While Ethereum has spent seven years to produce an inferior staking solution, Cardano has already figured out a far superior one all the way back in 2020 and is now solely focused on taking it to the next level where basically the system scales with the network speed forever. It's also important to remember that with Hydra and Mithril and Plutus, whilst they can produce significant growth in their current or initial versions, they will be constantly being improved over time with new releases continually gaining new capabilities. Charles closed off by explaining that we have in fact realized the vision of Bitcoin in Cardano. Color coins is Cardano native assets. Lightning is what Hydra has achieved. Inclusive accountability where everyone has a copy of the blockchain even without having a copy of the blockchain so you are your own node and own bank are all things Cardano has delivered. All of this combined with the introduction of input endorsers that will enable the network to scale to billions of users whilst becoming more decentralized over time and with Voltaire the idea that everyone can contribute in governance is the final piece of that puzzle. It seems everything Satoshi outlined Cardano has realized in this roadmap. How can anyone with an ounce of credibility look the scientists, engineers and developers throughout the community in the eye and discredit what Cardano has so far achieved in any way? I've linked the full Charles Basho presentation in the description and would urge everyone, if you haven't already, to go give it a watch. So I wanted to end today's video with a great thread posted by Ada Advocate as I think it provides some great perspective on where this is all likely heading and ties in nicely to the theme of the video. It reads, the fight against Cardano has shifted. This is significant in terms of what's to come. Where it used to centre around not having, e.g. no smart contracts, not scaling, no dApps, no DEXs, no way to solve consensus, these narratives fell apart as the features were delivered. Now the FUD, for the most part, is either nonsense or it's a statement that's instantly verifiable as false. Influencers like Eric Wall won't even touch the technology narrative in fear of being mocked, and even Van Ness keeps talking about zombie chain and TPS, but it's laughable how bad of an argument he makes. Masari is coming around, inviting Charles to speak and allow for an open discussion around VC was a very nice touch. So why is this significant? Well for one, the risk off environment we're experiencing globally a lot of VCs are seeking shelter outside of crypto. Guess which blockchain that doesn't impact as much as others? Answer, the one that didn't have VC involvement to begin with. So what comes next? Similar to the beginnings of the dot-com boom, websites that were heavily backed by VCs but offered no real innovation disappeared. What became valuable and world-changing? Small startups focused on leveraging the technology of the internet to build robust, stable and useful platforms. I firmly believe that's what differentiates Cardano from other blockchains. It's a narrative as old as time itself. Innovation and building properly win out over quick deployments. The modern society doesn't allow for a first mover advantage. It rewards methodically built and properly deployed platforms. Therefore, by studying the FUD narrative closely, one can see the arguments against Cardano are slowly eroding and being replaced by immature crying. Similar to how Google, Apple and Facebook were treated at the beginning, it's early, but it won't be for long. A year and a half ago, we were trying to demonstrate that Cardano had NFTs. A year ago, it was demonstrating that we had smart contracts. Now it's speed and users. Amazing how fast it's accelerating. I'll leave you with this, if so far Cardano has delivered against and continually disproved all of the FUD narratives in the rollout of the tech itself, what makes you think this won't also be the case as we tackle scalability and governance? Basher is well and truly underway, and as the dogs keep barking, the caravan just continues rolling down the road. So that's it for today's installment of Cardano Insights, as we keep track of all the developments and continue to spread those positive Cardano vibes. If you found value in the content and want to help me crack this YouTube algorithm, then please be sure to comment, share, like, subscribe and hit that notification bell, which will go a long way in scaling the channel, Basho style. We'll be back soon with your daily roundup. Until then, thanks for watching, have a great day and as always, keep it Cardano.